three, two, one. This is your Libertarian Crusaders podcast, episode number 21. And today we have Sam Matherly, and we're going to talk about her podcast, Tending Lambs, which is a focus. Oh, I'll let you explain sure. it. Yeah, sure. Um, Tending Lambs is um, a podcast um, and a website, and we have a group on Facebook and everything um, dedicated to Christian gentle parenting. So we try to kind of corner the market on good theology, which is something that goodness does it lack in the gentle parenting sphere, especially in the church. Um, so a lot of people are really hesitant to even consider it because a lot of the theology is so bad. And um, yeah, so we just kind of got together and decided we wanted to put something out there that was actually helpful and sound for people. And so we've been doing the podcast um, since since earlier this year, uh, I think in the spring was when we started it and just kind of grown ever since. We have a couple writers for the blog and uh, the group is growing tons every day, which is really encouraging because, like I said, a lot of people are hesitant. So, All right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I guess there's a lot of confusion sometimes in its approach of uh, child rearing, parenting in the Bible sometimes. Um, and we'll get to those like quips about it, too. Uh, but I think it's great that uh, there is this uh, group or a push for combining libertarianism with peaceful parenting. Uh, and for me personally, with uh, Christianity and mm-hmm. kind of bringing it all effect. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen Molyneux is known for, as the guy who talks about not spanking, but he's he's also not uh, Christian. So right. he, he probably tries to speak to Christians about it, but he's not as effective maybe as somebody. It can be really hard because it is such a big thing in the secular world. And it's kind of one of those things that you see and you're like, well, you know, they have that right. And since they have that right, then the Christians will be like, oh, that's just pop psychology. And this is liberalism and yada, yada, yada. And so they just kind of won't even hear you out most of the time. Um, a lot of it is just very traditionalist thinking. So Aside from the verses that are taken out of context, you also just have tradition and how we have to kind of honor that in our culture, which are my just, parents did it to me. Oh my gosh, <laughs> right. yes, the uh, what is it, survivorship bias? Is, right. I think I'm my fine. father would be like, uh, you know, uh, on Sundays, uh, you know, uh, you're lucky I don't hit you because my father would hit me right. if I was loud on Sundays <laughs> you know, when I'm trying when he's trying to sleep. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, no, I I rode without a, a seatbelt and I was fine, and it's just. This, it's just not a good argument, especially when you're talking about raising small people who are actually whole people. So, right. That's, that's like the end game. We want them to be whole people. Right. Yes. Whole, <laughs> not broken. Autonomous, <laughs> unbroken people. So, and I think a lot of it comes down to kind of healing from, um, from our past and stuff. I mean, I think, I think everybody involved attending limbs was pretty punitively parented. And, um, and I mean, some of us came out of households where there was some abuse. And so people can hear that and think, oh, you're overcorrecting. So there's there's a lot of nuances and a lot of conversations to be had. But people don't like to think that their parents may have done something wrong, especially in the church when it's being preached from the pulpit that you need to hit your kids. I mean, that's the authority. And it's been the authority, even going back to, I mean, biblical commentary from John Calvin will say things about spanking and it's just, it's just always been there. So right. It's, it's Even uh, Obama came out a while ago saying like, you know, back in my day, what we used to do, like the community, you know, we'll get together and if a kid wasn't acting right, you know, someone would hit him or, you know, or get him to your parents to hit your kid. Did he really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I didn't even hear <laughs> wow. about that. I, I'm, I've turned that into a meme many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. well, yeah. well, the go-to one has always been spare the rod and spoil the child, right? Right. Isn't that Proverbs? Or? It's not a verse. Oh. It's not. There are verses. That's the thing. I just had this conversation with my husband's <laughs> grandmother because she was like, wait, how is that working for you? Not spanking. And it says spare the rod, spoil the child in the Bible. And it is actually from a poem that has absolutely nothing to do. It's a satirical poem that has nothing to do with children in the first place. Um, there are verses that are similar. So I think that's probably why people kind of. Right. Like is this the original little- soundbite? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. oh, let's just move this forward. This is a good argument. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's funny because there's so many Christians and I will, I mean, good Christians who know their Bibles, who will say, who will say, spare the rod, spoil the child. And it's not. Yeah, call there. them out on that. Yeah, <laughs> there, there is something about that to be said. And um, um, the rod is something that a shepherd would hold. Mm-hmm. Right. And the shepherd and uh, taking care of his flock and sheep or say like the parent taking care of their children. They don't use the rod on their sheep. The rod is meant to ward off wolves. Mm -hmm. The rod is to ward off dangers outside of uh, his flock or his uh, the shepherd. So it's not used even on the sheep. 
Oh, right? never. Yeah. yeah. So there's this weird <laughs> rumor and someone actually wrote into like Sheep Magazine about it. Like, did they ever just like, what was it? Um, They were saying that you could use a rod to break one of the sheep's legs if they kept wandering off. And, <laughs> and the people who responded were like, that does not work with our livelihood. Um, Also, the sheep wouldn't trust us and they would be broken and I would have to carry them. This is not, where did you get this? Like, so... <laughs> So what, what about the hook part of the shepherd's body? Is that used to kind of corral them? Or that I don't is, even, that's hmm. all I've ever found about the hooked part would be good for corralling. But I mean, these are also around. huge. So if you're talking about the context of the rod, which I mean, that's kind of one of the major points of contention between Christians and what it actually means. But the rods in the Bible were, they were huge. If you, if you hit a child with one of those, they probably would have died, which you weren't supposed to kill them. So, and even if someone um, did deserve a beating, according to the law, it would have been um, a young person, usually a young man between the ages of about 12 to 14 um, and up. So kind of in that the precipice of, of adulthood where they're, learning to obey the law and having punishments for it. And um, so the rod that was used to beat them, there's, um, oh, yeah, it wasn't a shepherd's rod. Right, <laughs> right, um, right. A, uh, there's a really great book called, um, I think it's, uh, I actually wrote it down because I knew I would forget it. But Yeah, because even today, like, you hear these size of the stick and uh, like, oh, go go out of that bush and pick up a stick. Or who was that football player who got in trouble for telling his kid? Reggie oh, Peterson. Oh, right. Yeah, I think yeah. Reggie. Or it was Adrian Peterson. Adrian. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And and he uh, had his kid go out and get a stick. And, you know, it's this whole like mind game of how big do I want the stick that he hits <laughs> me with to be like, it's kind of a it's kind of a bizarre process that. <laughs> Well, he used the argument that he didn't know any better because this is what happened to him. And that does make a certain amount of sense because people aren't taught logic to think things through. It's like, well, if that's what happened to you, maybe that's not the most productive way to learn a lesson. That's not teaching a person reason. That's using force to get them to comply. Right. right. Like, do you think uh, Mary ever used force on Jesus when he was a kid? <laughs> Right. If we're supposed to be imitators of Christ, right? <laughs> uh, do you think Christ would? I mean, not that like uh, he wouldn't have kids. That's not his purpose. But like uh, Mary to be imitation or anyone to be an imitation of that. You know, do you think God would do that? It is so hard to hear people actually say if Jesus had children, then of course he would spank them because that was how it was, and that's what um, that's what the Old Testament prescribes. But something that people often miss, aside from the fact that I mean, I have. 10 arguments against why Jesus wouldn't hit a child. But um, it sounds great when you say it like that. People just don't buy it. But um, it's that Proverbs is not, it's not prescriptive. It is a book of wisdom. It is, um, we had a great few episodes with Dr. Don Owsley, who um, he is, he's a former pastor. He also is really educated in um, reactive attachment disorders because he had a daughter, an adopted daughter with reactive attachment disorder. And she struggled really bad. And in the church, they just kept telling him that they needed to spank her and spank her and spank her and nothing ever happened. And he just has this whole journey kind of coming out of that. Um, and I would say he's, I would classify him personally as a theologian. I don't know if he would say that himself. He's very humble. But, um, but we did a few episodes on Proverbs specifically with him. And um, Proverbs was a book that took the law from the Torah and it kind of turned it into a book of wisdom for an audience that was young men who were being taught to be leaders, whether that was a ruler or someone in the community um, of the Jewish people. And if you start out with Proverbs and you take the first one or the first chapters, one through nine, it is an explanation of things that are godly and things that are foolish. And the rest of the book is wisdom pertaining to going in these two different directions but the audience is not it's not a parenting manual um it's not it, it's not a manual on um it's not a manual to little children either i mean we one of the first things that they start talking about is adultery <coughs> so if you commit adultery then you're lawless why this is not pertaining hmm. to um to small children so yeah so small children would be honor your <coughs> father and mother Mm -hmm, um, and then you'll find that, you know, these children would be like a, a reward from God. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Right. So not to like to damage or harm in any sense and to instruct as the Bible instructs uh, the parents. Exactly. And in the law. And so if you do want to dive into the verses in Proverbs that talk about things um, regarding the rod, you have to one, figure out the context, figure out the audience. And um, you have to also understand that when you figure out the audience is these young men who are going to be instructed to be leaders and to be godly men rather than delinquents or people who are godless, uh, such as the, the Gentiles that were around them to be set apart, you realize that there was, I mean, God grants a, a development period, a period of grace from children to becoming young men. It's, we're not talking about two, sorry. <laughs> we're not talking about two-year-olds, three-year-olds, six-year-olds, 10-year-olds. Um, God, God is the one who designed the brain and was fully aware that, uh, that certain developments needed to take place before we could have such things as reason. Um, so you can't really read Proverbs as a whole, understanding the context and who it was written for and what it was meant for and think that it applies to small children who have not yet become men because it is it is a book that is it's for men and for leadership and explaining lawlessness and godlessness and a 2-year-old can't choose between the two these are these are moral decisions such as adultery and gluttony and dishonoring your mother and father and being prideful um, just having a lack of discernment it's it's a it's a choice that you see that children are just not capable of of making those choices to be to hate God essentially to be an atheist of of sorts is what you would kind of be in the Jewish community if you were in the covenant but not acting as part of it. Right. They say that um, if a child is uh, uh, can understand reason, then you don't hit him. If uh, right. <laughs> if a child can understand reason, then he's not going to understand why you're hitting him. <laughs> exactly. Yes. No. That's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's there's an excellent book, and it's a secular book, um, but it's called The Whole Brain Child by Dan Siegel, and it's actually on YouTube. The audiobook is on YouTube for free. It's like six hours long, but it's kind of a, a manual for parents on brain development um, that's written by someone who understands it, but in terms that a, a lay parent could, right. could understand. But six hours in the whole whatever, like the status would say 18 years of a child's life. Six hours is like a tiny investment. Mm -hmm, so if you take the time before to just have a little bit of knowledge, arm yourself, if you will, with some tools to be able to take on the job, it will make the whole thing much easier. Right. And it is kind of hard to sit back because we were punitive. Um, we have four children and our oldest is eight. And even though I came from a background that I knew was very unhealthy, I didn't recognize certain elements of it as being unhealthy because I thought that they were biblical. So I kind of just thought my parents took it too far. Um, so we ended up starting out um, spanking and it, it made everything so much worse. And that is why we even stepped back to say, is this working? And is there something, is our child neuro atypical? Like, does he have ADHD? Is he on the spectrum? What is going on? And, um, and we were in a really, really, really tiny church and they just kept telling us things about um, how like our life would be so much easier if we just got the discipline down and the discipline to them was spanking and it was making everything worse. And I was like, am I the only person in the church who has a child that is just not, it was embarrassing and it was it, it alienating. Was, it was alienating. It really was. We were thought of as bad parents and I don't think anyone would have said that to us, but it was, it was quite clear. So and there we, was like disruptions in, in church or. It was so small that any amount of attitude from a child or <laughs> any, like, I mean like 30 people. So everyone oh, wow. picked up on everything. It was, it was an you can only disrupt time. if you're a baby crying. That is the only. Right. right. Well, and they right. were expected to sit with us in service after the age of three, which we do, hmm. um, we do appreciate like the availability of having children in service and our son does quite often sit with us and whereas he could go to Sunday school, but it was, that was a lot of pressure because we have very outspoken, very <laughs> intense, very loud children. So to graduate out of, um, out of like at three, three is three, three is an age. <clears throat> that is quite an age too. So to yeah. try and, to try and corral them and to know that everyone expects you to like take them out to the car and spank them. And it was just, all of that was so confusing that that was initially 
what had us step back. And I asked my husband if we could just stop spanking and revisit, like, let's, let's just stop, step back. We will deal with the whole doctrine of it, but I need to rethink some things because it's not working. And our family, it was kind of falling apart in that sense. So, um, so yeah, that was not sure where that tangent came from. Well, I feel like this had the same thing with, um, my siblings. Um, I was in the military got stationed back in DC. And, um, so I was, I was with my parents more often. And, um, I told my, my parents, my mother's like, look, all this stuff I'm reading about. So it's like, hitting them is not a good thing to do. Uh, my brother Albert's getting very aggressive outbursts. Uh, so they stopped. Uh, and then like that, within that year, uh, he started instilling his own discipline. He had his own, he knew when, when it was time for him to go to bed. One time I was like, Hey, let's play another video game, you know, shoot them up games. He's like, no, no, I got an exam tomorrow morning. He's like, I got to go to bed. <laughs> uh, and like, uh, he started to lose weight. He started walking upright. I mean, I did wonders just to, uh, I guess, respect him as a whole mm -hmm. and, and communicate and trying to explain reasons as to like, why we ask him to do this and that's and that instead of like commanding him like a, like a slave. Yes. Right. And I think that's where a lot of, uh, their rebellion will come from. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, so yeah, I, I found work wonders as soon as that was like instilled is taking a step back and looking what, what it is that, uh, they were doing. And I was telling you to my mother, like, look, this didn't work for me. Right. <laughs> look at how I turned out. Right. <laughs> I think it could turn out better for my brother, Alvar and my sister, Jennifer. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think taking a step back is a good approach. And I think a lot of people take this as like a, I don't know, like a personal assault mm -hmm. on their own parenting. Um, or against their parents. People right. get very defensive for their parents. And I guess I was just rebellious enough to be like, well, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but, uh, <laughs> well, especially in like, if, if you're a Christian, it's, it's difficult because it, are you disrespecting your right. mother and father by saying that they parented you wrong mm -hmm. or something? And you know, it's not necessarily that it's like, we have more information today. You know, this is 2019, maybe when, you know, in 1980 or 1970, like they just didn't know what, uh, corporal punishment does to the brain, you know, well, and there's as a child. been so many periods too, especially in our culture. I mean, in every culture, but you can kind of, I'm familiar with American history a little bit more. And there's so many periods where everyone was in survival mode and your family had to be together and stick together. Your kids had to listen. Everyone kind of had to, to get through it and obey and be a team and anyone out of line kind of risked causing a lot of problems. And I think that we broke away from that and probably with the, and 70s, yeah. right. I mean, civilization has come this far, even through spanking. Right. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think it's like affluence that causes us to have the opportunity? Like, you know, if you're if you're living in a cave and you're looking for fire and, and food and berries or whatever, then you don't have time to worry about peaceful parenting, right? right. But well, with a, with capitalism and free markets, you have all this affluence and created, and that that gives us more time to think, okay, now how should I really be parenting, you know, my kids? Mm -hmm. There's this, uh, a study adverse childhood experience study mm -hmm. that came out and they've shown that that doesn't matter how much money you have. Hmm. So that was their thinking that if you, like the middle-class, higher middle-class income people would have so much money that the, the, um, abuses that the children occur would be very little. And they found that it didn't matter. There were like many scoring in the <clears throat> 10 range, like there's 10 points you allocate to see like how adverse your childhood was. And a lot of different things kind of add up to that. And they found that it didn't really make a difference how much money that they had. Um, so that was kind of startling. So it just kind of showed that just the actions that was happening in the environment and the parenting were kind of prevalent in all kinds of uh, income brackets. Um, I think uh, they do show different cultures uh, spank more or less than other mm -hmm. ones. They have shown that Hispanics uh, hit spanks more of their children than um uh, Caucasian cultures, white cultures, and it kind of kind of goes out further. I think the Asians are kind of. I'd imagine they'd be the worst. But See, I would think that they're have, not as bad because I've well, I just have you know random experiences with like Asian kids running right. around not. Be, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I, I just come from like I, I hear sometimes they say like I did bad in my exams, time for suicide. I have dishonored my parents, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, it's yeah, more of a right. shame than anything. It's <laughs> okay, like yeah. psychological. They kill stress. themselves before they could get spanked. So yeah. maybe that's why they have a lower spanking. <laughs> well, culture. and that's interesting that you bring that up too, because shame is kind of um, it tends to go along with punitive parenting. And even if you don't hit your kids, the the shaming can cause as much, honestly, psychological damage, according to studies and everything that we're kind of just witnessing now that we can step back and look at everything past. And we've had so many cycles of, we've had a lot of 
permissive parenting. I think everyone can agree to that. And that's also why people are hesitant to embrace gentle parenting is because they conflate it with permissive parenting, um, which does happen. But um, would that be considered? <laughs> what would we call that? Because there's two kinds of parenting. I guess there are different kinds. There's the helicopter parenting, yeah. right? Or like <laughs> oh, overbearing. You know, yeah, overbearing. You, know, you can't make any mistakes. You can get hurt. Right. Plow, like uh, I've heard it as bulldozer parenting. There's yeah. bulldozer right. every obstacle out of your way. You're basically so you're right. teaching your child not to know how to handle themselves <laughs> or to be an adult making decisions when you're doing And when they like go that. to college and someone hurts their feelings, that's oppression. <laughs> right. exactly. and then they vote for Bernie Sanders, and then it's all over. You're voting against your best interests, right? Right. right. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of people who think that uh, gentle parenting leads to socialism. So that you can say that a lot of that could be a fault of um, the media. Uh, so, like many decades ago, people didn't have access to much TV to mm -hmm. kind of warn them that there's dangerous lurkings behind every uh, door and corner and nook here. And then the media comes out like. There's a danger lurking that oh could threaten gosh, your children. Yes. Find out today at seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because you can think the statistics on crime have actually gone down. Right. Like violent crime has yeah. gone down. But I mean, if you ask me and my four kids, I'm like watching them while they're outside. And, <laughs> um, we live out in Powhatan. We don't really have that many neighbors, but I, I am aware of where all the sex offenders are, which there are some out by us out in the country and it's Powhatan. I, <laughs> fair yeah, point. But um how else do you get sex? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Uh, but um but like I I like to see my kids in the backyard because I just have this fear and that's we don't even have the news. We don't even have cable right. because I I can't nice. stand going to my parents' house and seeing the news is just on because all badness in the world is just concentrated right there and you can't really escape it with social media either. So I think, I mean, the fear I think is natural, but the influence that's causing it is uh, is overblown and overwhelming. Do you homeschool your kids? Yes, we uh, unschool. Unschool, so, nice. Yeah. Well, there you go. You've already uh, dropped the probability of them uh, being gross in a lot of uh, abusive happenings at public schools right. that they find. That is the fear that I have. <laughs> <laughs> There's a real fear, a legitimate one. Uh, even the the uh, Board of Education published their own studies and like, oh, yikes, this is so much. Um, and so I think uh, that's where the real kind of dangers are. I mean, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like that all the time, but it's these things kind of grow up and you have clashing cultures and you have clashing parenting and you have you don't have a high trust society. You know who's mm -hmm. teaching your kids anymore. It's like that is, uh, yeah, a real danger, I'd imagine. Well, segregating your kids by age is a pretty w terrible way to try to educate them. It like really if you're trying to school them and be like, oh, you can only interact with people that are of your age that think the exact same as you, then yeah, that's a great way to put them in a bubble and then make sure that they never break out of that. But if you're trying to make a stimulus uh, process response adult versus a stimulus response adult, you you have to engage them in all sorts of people of different ages, people of different understandings, people of different intellectual levels, all sorts of that. Yeah, they used to have schools like that where like- One all... room schoolhouse used to be a right. thing where yeah. the older kids, cause there was only one teacher, the teacher couldn't teach everything. Right. So the older kids were expected to help out and teach like down, It reinforces downstream. what they know as well. And the little ones have a, like a model to kind of learn after as well. Yeah, and then it becomes like a good high trust society function kind of occurring from there too. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, these days with public schools, I think it's, it's great to unschool. I think there's been an increase of that kind of direction, I think, in Virginia. Mm -hmm. I've noticed and there's, it's kind of, I grew up um, in a lot of like around the military bases and stuff, but we would have the bigger Christian communities. I don't know why those two tend to go together, yeah. but, uh, but we would have homeschool groups because I was homeschooled and they were all very evangelical and now i'm noticing that there's a lot of secular homeschoolers and unschoolers um in this area which has kind of been interesting for us and it's nice not what, to be in you didn't same. learn how to socialize oh, <laughs> i did go to public high school um i demanded to it was a terrible mistake and my mom was probably so tired of me that she was like bye felicia like just get it on out but um wow. but yeah i was it's like uh, a lord of the flies environment there right? <laughs> Well, I went to I went to high school for two years and I hated it. But I remember taking driver's ed and the woman was like, oh, it's so good that your mom put you in public school so that you could socialize. And I was like, 
this is not like I'm not socializing right now. This is not it. Socializing <laughs> is asking permission to use the bathroom. Oh my you goodness. can't talk to your classmates unless you want to be written up and go to detention afterwards. Right? Yeah, you're <laughs> face punched in by kids on the school bus. <laughs> right. I refuse to ride the school bus. Socialize, <laughs> socialize. Oh. <laughs> that is different. Yeah. What an experience. Um, so how would you, how did you come across um, tying this with uh, libertarianism? How would you equate uh, in the realm being uh, along the lines of peaceful parenting, uh, this uh, the theology of it, and with uh, the non-aggression principle? So what had happened was everything I thought I had ever known in the course of like six months fell completely apart. Like my republicanism, my military. Um, word worship Worsh- honestly worship, yeah. yeah military i was trying to not say worship but that's, uh, <laughs> um the the way that i thought theologically even coming to terms with the fact that i didn't know if i was a christian i just assumed i had been um and then um and then our parenting and the church that we were in so we had the kind of this year of deconstruction and at the same time that we were concerned about um parenting in a way that was detrimental to our children especially our son, who we do know now has ADHD and, um, and a couple other kind of factors at play there that make it a little bit more difficult. He's not as compliant as, as you're supposed to get when you spank your kids, I guess. But um, so we just, libertarian came in, and I don't even know how because, or libertarianism came in, and I don't even know how because a lot of this was on Facebook. And when you're a young mom and you're kind of buried <laughs> under your children, that's just such a way to to learn and to talk to other people. And I started finding people who were discussing things that I thought were really relevant um, and somewhat in the theological groups about the treatment of other people and somewhat just about politics, because I think a lot of this is around the election too. And that was, I mean, that was a, that was a big year for everybody and and drawing lines in the sand. And there was a lot of, which year? 2016. Okay. That election. I'm a baby. Um, (laughs) But, um, But just kind of seeing people talking outside of what I knew to be good moral conservative standing and talking about their experiences and how a lot of people in the church even were being left out um, and how they couldn't understand how people liked Trump, how they liked the military, how the border situation, it just seemed like everyone was so dehumanized. And somehow through all of that and me realizing I knew absolutely nothing, I came to... um, I I found a reformed libertarian group on Facebook because there is a reformed group for everything. <laughs> there is a reformed group for home decor, for uh, tacos. There's a reformed wow. group for tacos. Yeah, so there's a lot of, it's it's crazy. But um, Is it true about reformed men that they all must grow beard? Or is that just like... My husband has a nice beard. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I've heard <laughs> this. I've heard, I like it and I've heard it and I support it. <laughs> it's, it's very common the beers and the cigars and the craft beers so, yeah. um so um yeah so i just um it was just around the same time that all of these things kind of fell apart for me and i had to piece them back together and the non-aggression principle came up and i was like that sounds like someone treating someone else as if they are made in the image of god and what does that actually mean and so coinciding with gentle parenting you start thinking Obviously, my child is made in the image of God, and if I want them to respect people and property and for others to respect them and their property and just kind of have this inerrant, honestly, respect for people, um, it just it just seemed biblical. It seemed like everything that I was learning biblically about how to treat others lined up with the NAP, and then that flowed really nicely into parenting, and it was it was hard because some authority is biblical and some authority is good. Um, and there are structures to be had and we are given stewardship over our children. But something that um, I think Katie from Tending Lambs pointed out was that we are not owners of our children's rights, but we are stewards of their rights and we are there to protect them. We have a role of authority, but are we stepping outside of the bounds of that by being punitive, um, by just being too authoritarian. Um, And so I just honestly, 
and then it all just kind of came together as I was looking at the NAP. Wow. But, um, but the, the basis of that for us was that, I mean, why do we honor people? Why do we respect them? Why do they have intrinsic value? And it's because they're all made in the image of God. Every single person is made in the image of God. And, and that is what separates us from all else of creation. And we do have dominion over creation. Um, and there's, I mean, our children are whole people and they have souls and they are given the image of God and dominion over themselves and over creation. And what are we teaching them if we are honestly disrespecting them in a way that I don't believe that the Bible allows because I don't believe that um, that those verses that people say justify spanking do. Right. Yeah. I think it's like usually the go-to with Christ too, is the one where, uh, you know, like let the little children come to me and the apostles are saying, (laughs) Oh no, what, you know, what are you doing? Like, we don't keep these kids away from him. And then he says, you know, even these people can, can go to heaven. So this idea that like he treats them like, uh, they're made in the image of God. And yet people seem to look down upon kids and Mm -hmm. see them as this, okay, you're not really a full, you know, full blown human yet, you know? So. Right. And we also seem to have a burden as if we can save our children. And I think that it comes from a misreading and a misunderstanding of the old covenant and the law and what we see in Proverbs, because there is a verse that essentially says that if you beat your son, you can save him from Sheol. But the context to that verse, if you look at the whole passage of it, is that you're talking about um, a son who is a glutton and a drunk and who would be stoned otherwise. So it's really not that far-fetched to think if you take him out and you beat him, which was a lawful thing to do when you have sinned against God um, in that time, it was a public beating that you could do that instead of stoning him, like to save him from death because of even, I mean, part of that verse is hyperbole. So if you were to take it literally, then you would still be beating him instead of stoning him. And that's honestly a mercy in, in that culture and in that time. Hmm. Yeah. And there's a verse, uh, Ephesians 6, 4, fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the d- discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Right. And so I find uh, like even the commandments you say, you know, even related to other areas of libertarianism, like against uh, taxation, thou shalt not steal, <laughs> uh, which you kind of break down as a uh, respect for property rights. Right. Right. And first area for property rights begins at body ownership. And so, you know, there's ways that even reading that uh, you can find libertarianism uh, and be in alignment towards uh, not hitting your kid either mm-hmm. and respecting their body ownership of themselves of being even if they're a small, you know, person. Because one day they'll be tall and these are kind of things that kind of want them to instruct other people when Absolutely. they're of age. Yeah. Um, but I think it's beautiful that the way that you and your group have kind of formed this and put this together, uh, that's been our, our kind of crusade like for a good number of years here. <laughs> and yeah, there's been a lot of people who've been like against it and kind of weirded out by it. Um, but, you know, a lot of the science now kind of does support it. Mm-hmm. Uh, hitting your kid. Under the age of four is the worst thing you can do to a child. The brain is still developing. You know, you uh, create miswiring of the brain and chemicals where things are supposed to go. And so, uh, you know, so other uh, doctors have found that that could lead to an area of addiction. That's where addiction mm-hmm. comes from. Uh, so when you like an argument, if people want to have like the smartest children, then, then don't hit their kids. If you want them to lose IQ points, then that's the last thing you want to do. There was one study um, that I was looking at a few months ago that was showing that kids who are spanked um, have less gray matter in their brain. Right. So yeah. it's, it's very, it's becoming hmm. very clear. Right. And, um, I mean, you look at public schools earlier when we talked about, there are still over a dozen states that still have oh corporal gosh. punishment. I was amazed to see that. And I remembered as soon as I read that, I, I was in, I did kindergarten, first grade and fourth grade in a public school in Oklahoma. And I remember one of the kids who we all knew to be troubled. And of course, I'm six. So if you you know a kid to be troubled, that's kind of a sad thing. But um, I remember his parents and another boy's parents coming. And we all knew that they were going outside and picking a switch. Like, I I had totally forgotten about that. And to think that that could occur just... It happens it's actually mostly to boys. I'm so so the majority, when you look surprised. at the statistics, right. yeah, over like 90% plus is happens to boys. Well, it's a, it's, the environment is created for, for girls. There are, there are girls' teachers there. It's an environment created for, for, uh, for that sex. 
Uh, for, for boys, they learn differently. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying yes, segregate everything, but I think boys learn differently than girls. And I, I can confirm, <laughs> I have three girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I find like even more of a case in argument against sending your kids to a public school, especially one of these states that allows strangers to beat your child, mm -hmm. right? And what kind of parent can you say to just like, yes, I don't know who you are, but you may hit my kid, right? Um, that is a sin, I think, at some point, it's somewhere along the line. Well, and if you do look back in, not that we're in the Old Covenant, but if you do look back at the context of the Old Covenant as well, if you were to be punished corporately in your community, you were taken out publicly. Your parents would be there. I believe that it could have either been your father or the elders that mm -hmm. would have given you the beating. And they had rules. They had rules on what they were allowed to do and not to do because, I mean, they were not allowed to kill you. That would have been... Um, that was one of the rules, but, um, the, the concept of, of punishment has been so, it's just so distant from what people claim to hold to as traditional, which if they say it's biblical, I don't think they know what they're talking about half the time. Right. And it seems like it's almost as much for the punisher as it is for the punishee. Like, oh gosh, the sense of justice is strong when you have kids, like you, you want and that was part of us stepping back to was us feeling like we were triggered and it happens. We get triggered as adults. And when you're kind of hit or like hit as a kid, instead of someone helping you process through everything, taking your development into consideration and sharing the gospel with you, which is the only thing that can actually effectually do anything in your life and with your behavior. Um, it's just, yeah. How, is, <laughs> how, how have uh, things been since uh, that moment of re-examination with uh, your parenting with your children? Um, I, I feel a lot more accountable. Um, I feel a lot more in line myself, which I think is, is a huge focus of gentle parenting is, is self-control um, and respecting the, the autonomy of everyone around you, whether it's not hitting them or not shaming them or just not being sinful towards them. Um, so I think that's kind of the top because it's not it's not a unicorn. We did a whole episode on how like people expect when they start doing these things and the, these kind things and these gentle things that their kids are just gonna shape up and be compliant and wonderful and never sin. And um, so don't get your hopes up too much, but um, <laughs> there's, still, there's still people. Um, but um, it's given us a lot of room with our son in particular to to trust us and a lot of the times um emotions do come out and they're very big and it means a lot to me that he knows that we're not going to hit him because of that his emotions are not disrespecting us personally he might be doing something that is like actually actually sinful and that is that's a moment for us to take him to scripture and to to connect with him and and to build trust with him and it's just been it hasn't like taken away his ADHD or anything like that or the stuff that he struggles with, but it's, it's a lot more peaceful. It's a lot more peaceful in our home. Um, the kids aren't, I mean, they're not asking questions like, well, why can you hit us and we can't hit each other? Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah, our our, our five-year-old in particular is a little less. Mom, I didn't like the way you talk to me. Um, Pick a switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she would too. Yeah, I mean, some of the things that um, our, our five-year-old poet, she's, she is a tenacious little creature. Spanking wouldn't, she probably just would have whooped me back. Like, <laughs> she is an intense little girl. Sleep, mom. <laughs> right. Well, she started saying stuff like, why are you doing that? That's sinful. Why are you yelling? That's sinful. Oh, why are you? Yeah. Wow. Was, and, and it was, it's Give me really that Bible. <laughs> yeah. No, it's very humbling to have a, a small person yeah. sitting there like, you're teaching me these lessons. And yet, what are you doing with your own self? And, so um, descent isn't disrespect no it, it really is and i think we get so confused between i mean yes god does tell you to obey your mother and father but god doesn't tell your mother and father to sin against you and um and honoring our mother and father is it can look different than never challenging them because there i mean there's times that i remember that i was like five and i knew my mom was wrong and saying something about that it's not a challenge or having a different feeling I think that's a really hard thing in the church is because kids are expected to say how high when we say jump and they're expected to always 
what is it? Obey the first time with a happy face. There's like a slogan that I hear constantly. Um, is it in one of those communist uh, camps? I know, right? <laughs> um, it's not discipleship. It's, it's I don't, honestly, it, it's like a training to make them more comfortable for everybody else. And um, I mean, I doubt my in-laws will listen to this, but there was a time when um, my husband asked some question about, it was a really neutral question question about about God and why he did something and his dad didn't have the answer so his dad told him that asking the question was sinful like we try to fit kids into this box of you can't have questions you can't have feelings and then we push them out into the world and think that they're going to go and be fishers of men when they can't they can't think they can't mm. um they can't discern they don't know how to treat people they don't know well, that's like a, that's like a question. So if you're training somebody, a kid, to be gentle, right? I, I guess that's the idea: is that you know you're being gentle with them. You hope that they are not using force against other people. How do they go into the world and deal with difficult people? Like they have a boss who's difficult, or I guess yeah, I'm probably answering my own question, but it seems like. There are people out there who don't subscribe to this <laughs> right. and, and they're going to use all the tool, all the shame that they can on, you know, somebody who's, who's peaceful. How do you, how do they deal with that ultimately? I would say boundaries is, is such an important, that plays such an important role in this and understanding that our children do have boundaries and that is, that is okay. And as little people made in the image of God, they, there are boundaries that we should not cross even when we do have authority over them. Um, so I, I do think the connection and the relational aspect that that grows when you're respecting them as people teaches them what it looks like to be in healthy relationships and to process things when they are triggered or when they are hurt or when something does happen. Um, and so, I mean, we're teaching them what a healthy relationship looks like. So when you come into contact with somebody who is unhealthy, the first like the first thing that should come out of that is this is unhealthy and knowing that and knowing that you don't have to be subject to that and then being able to problem solve rather than just taking it. So, I mean, I'm still working out of just taking it from people because I spent 20 years just taking kind of the emotional and verbal abuse of my parents and thinking, well, I just have to deal with this. And that's not healthy. And I think as a society, we don't have enough boundaries. We don't recognize when relationships are toxic. We don't recognize when it's okay to say no or to leave the situation or to understand when someone else is hurting and where that might be coming from and how to kind of address that if, if it's appropriate. Right. Yeah. I was curious. Um, I, I was reading about this uh, preacher I forget his name now, but I thought of you for some reason. I forget why, because I've seen you post about reformed issues. <laughs> and uh, this one in particular, is probably not related to gentle parenting, but um, Mac MacArthur or Mac oh, yes, he, I'm familiar. He, sa he said something to the effect of uh, he was speaking against women preaching. Right. So have you encountered any discussion of like, well, you shouldn't be saying this, you know, your pastor said that it's OK to hit kids or so women shouldn't speak up about that or. Or whatever, because th this guy, I think he said, what do you he was like, what do you want this female pastor to do? And he was like, uh, go home or something. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm very, very. <laughs> <laughs> so I was curious what your thoughts were on that whole debacle or discussion. Oh, on the or I mean, do you mean not specifically on the John MacArthur and Beth Moore or. Oh, well, on that. And then also just on like uh, as as a group of women in a podcast, ah, right? You're talking oh gosh, about this yes. issue, and I'm sure that you'll get the same response from somebody. Oh, like, one of like my him. favorite things to talk about is complementarianism. Um, so I am not egalitarian before anyone comes at me, <laughs> to, to me or hang me or anything. I'm not egalitarian. Um, I am not complementarian either. Um, and um, it, it can be hard. And I know it's it's been hard for um, Carrie Baldwin with Mere Liberty as well um, to kind of deal with men who have issues with her because they will attack her femininity and a lot of women who do speak up get attacked for trying to take a role like of leadership and John MacArthur I think was the one that was saying things about how women are essentially trying to take over um, in politics <laughs> and all of these other things and how it's just not our place and how 
you basically get an infantilized society when women start taking over. So there's, that was a loaded question. There's a lot, of, <laughs> um, but, um, but we're not teaching authoritatively from the pulpit. We are nobody's elders. Um, we do mainly interact with women. I think it is harder for men to consider gentle parenting when we have kind of a culture in the church where men are supposed to be like hyper masculine and this complementarian idea of men and women has taken over biblical doctrine um, and honestly replaced it. And um, so we do speak mostly to women and a lot of the women do struggle with um, their husband not being on board. And if they go to their elders and try to talk to them, their elders are generally pro spanking and very complimentary. And so it is kind of like, oh, well, you need to submit. Well, you need to submit. And so I'm just hoping that while we don't have authority over anybody, that we can be an encouragement, um, that we can kind of fight off some of the criticism um, in a in a gentle way, we, we like to talk about gentle peopling a lot because yeah. gentle, gentle parenting leads to gentle peopling. And we've all noticed it in our marriages and with other people. Um, but yeah, we do run into that issue and it's kind of, it's kind of such a big issue that it's easy to wave off at this point because there are, there are men in the church who don't want women to have podcasts because they think that that's some kind of authority and they don't want women to be instructing, honestly, other women because they're not an authority over them. Um, in the role of elders. But. Right, right. Yeah, I was just curious about that. Oh, no, I mean, at the same time, there's um, another significant uh, stepfather that people also look at maybe his style of uh, parenting, uh, Joseph. And I don't <laughs> think uh, Joseph himself uh, spanked or hit uh, Jesus uh, while he was caring for him and providing resources for his upbringing. Right. And I think that's such an interesting perspective, too, because there you'll see arguments here and there about like, well, did Jesus even cry or did Jesus have developmentally appropriate meltdowns almost like what is sin versus what is developmentally appropriate? And I can't imagine that Mary and Jesus would have seen him and been like, whoa, he is being sinful right now. And we need to spank him <laughs> out of him. <laughs> An angel comes to us. This is the this is God, child of God. Uh, what do we do? Do we hit them? No. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Searching for a rod. <laughs> right. So I, I think there's a lot of areas for uh, masculinity and for gentleness. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that can instruct on that. Um, I was kind of looking over the church that I go to and kind of like thinking about him as well and what it would have been like for him to raise Jesus or Mary. It's like, I don't think they would never have hit him. Mm -hmm. um, my church is interesting because it's got this area in the back. There's a window here, a door, it's a separate room. Oh, so yeah. with people with children cry can room. go in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 And if they cry, they can cry, but they can still be part of the mass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, an interesting way of how they've kind of connected all together mm -hmm. for different purposes. So it doesn't have to be as alienating for some people. Yeah. It can um, be very alienating. But I will bring up to uh, my father, my priest, his thoughts on spanking next time I talk to him. And, uh, <laughs> Good luck. <yeah. laughs> some of those traditional Catholic priests can be totally pro spanking too so yeah. I, think, I think they're open to reason just like they, they have been i mean they're pretty uh i like them so far they're very uh based in a lot of the things they say and uh <laughs> i think uh the people there are kind of good and so far i haven't really found anything i disagree with so at some point i'll bring that up and see uh what they think of that well and generally if you're in a community with other believers and you're treating each other as brothers and sisters then bringing up a topic shouldn't be it should never be alienating it should right. always i mean I mean, the go-to like argument against it would be like, so it's okay to hit a kid if he doesn't understand. So me explaining this to you, and if you don't understand, you're saying it's okay for me to hit you, right? No, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's like, okay, where am I mistaken in your understanding of logic, right? Um, but I think uh, again, I think you're doing great work, uh, godly work. I think uh, <laughs> I think that's kind of important. I think uh, what, what what if the if everyone grew up peacefully, didn't know a language of violence and of like hurting each other and mm -hmm. had a respect for bodily property rights would be a much better place uh, within a couple of generations for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think maybe a lot of result of a lot of this violence is because of that. But I can see at the same time here, as you mentioned, crime rates are dropping. Um, people don't really speak out as much and saying like they hit kids like you don't see it as on, on television. You maybe used to see it with like Homer Simpson choking Bart, right? <laughs> but you don't see it as much on like uh, sitcoms where they talk about like they don't say anything about like 
hitting their kid mm-hmm. or it's not like visually on TV of any of that stuff kind of happening. So maybe they're starting to see that it's shameful to do something like that. Mm-hmm. And maybe that'll be a good kind of conversation to kind of spark a, a wave to kind of do to go against it, kind of like um, circumcision at some point. Right. Yeah, that's a tough one, too. Right. Something I've noticed within the libertarian circles is when spanking comes up, you'll have a lot of them revert back to, well, that kind of violence is okay. And I think the biggest thing to ask is why? Like, what about a small child makes it okay? What about your authority over them makes it okay? And I think if one is honest and um, takes into consideration, I mean, if they're Christian, the the biblical, the Bible, because that's the resource that we have, um, and the, the research that we have, then, I mean... I should hopefully come to the conclusion that it's not okay and maybe just kind of take a few steps back and, and reconsider. All right. Um, yeah. And if, if for Catholics, if we're to honor our father and mother, then honor Mary. Mary never hit their kids. All right. Jesus. Um, oh, that's a whole can of worms for the reformed. Event. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said us Catholics. <laughs> I have Catholic family members. <laughs> oh, <laughs> asterisk mark. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast show and talking about this. I think it's a great conversation, especially with Christmas coming up and celebration of uh, of Jesus. And I think uh, this is a great conversation to be had and continue to have. Um, I one day want to have children. So I one day want to instruct them in how to be uh, golly and good and, uh, and in turn uh, teach that to their own grandchildren, mm-hmm. right? Children, my grandchildren. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, with those listening, stay liberated. Get off my property. If they keep printing legislation, we'll keep printing guns. <laughs> <laughs>